want to welcome everybody to Wicker Road Music. My name is Pete, this is John, and uh, this is an interview and a spotlight for one of our wonderful instructors here at the store. And so we want you guys to be able to get to know John just a little bit. And uh, John, tell us a little bit about you. When did you get interested in music and the instruments that you play? Uh, well, I, um, I started playing guitar when I was eight. All right. And uh, I'll be 36, actually, this week. Man, you don't look a day... <laughs> I, I was saying, day over 45? No, 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 no. I'm mean, 18, 19 years old. 18, 19 years old? Humor him. I don't know if, it, if the 18 year olds have gray in the, in, the, in the beard there. But no, I, I, my first guitar, or my first instrument was a guitar. Okay. And um, I... Um, I ended up joining the army band when I was 20. Wow. Or when I was 19, actually, but uh, but I left when I was 20 there, and uh, and I played with them for eight years. Wow, you gotta have chops to get into that. <laughs> I was very lucky. I was I was super. I would I I wouldn't trade the experience for anything, man, because I got to travel the world and I got to play music every day with a bunch of really heavy hitting guys. So. Wow. So that was great, and um, uh, after that I went back to school, and um, I got a bachelor's and master's from some schools here in Florida in jazz performance. Nice. And just over the years, I don't remember when exactly, but I picked up um, picked up the banjo at some point, picked up the bass guitar mm -hmm. at some point, yeah. the ukulele. And when I went to school, I learned piano. You know, I had to learn piano when sure. you went to school for theory. music, and so yeah, I picked I, I picked that up. And um, so those are the main the main instruments that I that I play. Guitar is oh. still my main my main first guy, but I do do those other ones also. Awesome. So as an instructor at the store, how long have you been teaching now? Let's see. It's um, I want to say it's about a year and a half or so. At that the I've store? Been there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Now you've been teaching for eons, right? Apparently. Yeah, before that, of course. And actually part of our... our um, I started teaching when I was a teenager, just teaching buddies or friends of the family or whomever. Yeah. And then uh, as part of our public relations that we did through the Army Band, we did we did a lot of instruction. Or oh, like cool. We'd give master classes or something like that. So, awesome. So even, you know, since teenager days until now, I've been doing that. So just quickly, on a personal note... When you were performing with the army band, mm -hmm. give us just the one of the craziest experiences you had. Just, just real quick. <laughs> no. All right, he's laughing. Wait. That means there's more than one. Do I? Uh, he's do I, Can I get in trouble for anything? <laughs> yeah. say, do I have? A, do I have immunity? You do. You do. As <laughs> Actually, far as far as the space. The last the last four years I was in, I was with the NATO. We call the NATO Jazz Orchestra. Oh wow! And the way the army band set up is it actually is a, it's like a collection of musicians. Okay. And we break down into smaller groups. Yeah. And one of the coolest things that we got to do was as a NATO unit, it was it wasn't just U.S. guys. There was French Marines, and we had a Greek. Uh, Greek Air Force guy, um, Estonian, Latvian, uh, Italian. Mm. We had a Canadian piano player that came there, super cool guy. So it was all these NATO countries that, that had come together to play, but um, wow. we had a rock band. And it was a 10-piece <laughs> band. It was a rhythm section plus four horns and a singer. Oh, wow. And um, we actually went through, we, got, we went down to like Southern Europe and Southeast Asia and all that to all these like NATO bases and we got to put on all these performances for the for these NATO forces that were deployed. Oh wow. Know? And so we were like it was a lot of it was a lot of like morale boosters and just kinda of getting out there and partying yeah. with the guys and we'd seen some of the guys that, you know, they'd been there for a little while and you just get used to these really strange conditions to live under. Right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but to be able to, you know, we kinda of bring a little bit of home there and that was yeah. that was really cool because you know, you see these guys up on the stage Playing whatever we're playing, yeah. Chicago charts or Rage yeah. Against the Machine or anything in between. You know? Well, so I mean, cool. the music is that international language, right? Yeah. You can go anywhere and you can entertain and help people forget about where they're located yeah. for a while, if they're yeah. deployed or whatever the case might be. Yeah. So music is really powerful. Yeah. So give us a little bit of your philosophy in teaching, okay? And as yeah. you know, working with students and you know, let our our viewers know. You know what they might experience if they were to get you as an instructor. Yeah. So when I approach a student to to teach, I always I always want to give them something that's contextually relevant to them. Okay. Something that they're interested in, something that they want to do. Yeah. You know, some some people they just want to play for themselves. They want to sit in their living room and they just want to play tunes and they have fun. Yeah. I got people who are involved in their church and they want to like they want to learn church tunes. They want to learn how to do that. Yep. yep. I've got I've got one kid. He's he's about to start music school he's going to college for it okay so it's anybody it's it's any any level from very beginner day one all the way to people who are going to, to college for music and what i try to do is i try to try to cater what we're learning 
to something that is relevant to them. That's and cool. it has to be challenging, but it's also got to be fun because we, yeah. don't, we don't play music just to challenge ourselves all the time, right? We're not always in practice mode. Yeah. That, that gets boring after a while, you know? You never actually go and do the thing. Um, but my biggest approach is developing control. That's what we want to do. We want to we want to control our hands. We want to control. Um, we want to develop enough control that the, the things that we hear in our head or the things that we see on sheet music or hear on a recording, mm. we want to be able to replicate those things accurately on our instrument, whatever right. that whatever that thing is. So if it's you know if we're hearing it and we're writing music or we're just we're improvising you know a face melting guitar solo, right? Like we want to, we want to be able like to that. to to get those sounds out of the head. Through the hands onto the instrument in a way that's in a way that's that's accurate that we want to do. If we're if we're sight reading something, we want to be able to accurately re, accurately reproduce what's on the page, mm -hmm. and not just a robot can do that, right? We yeah. want to do it with with human expression. You know, how are we going to actually make music mm -hmm. beyond that? So so it's developing that control enough mm -hmm. to 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 make the sounds that you want to make when you want to make them the way you want to make them. Wow, that's my. That's how I approach things. So when it comes to ages and stuff, are you hip to uh, working with young kids? Totally, and things yeah. Like that. So, so cool I think that. I think I've had as young as six. Okay. And yeah, me too. I think. I've, yeah. Six and seven. Six, and um, yeah. I think I've got a lot of guys who are past retirement age. You know, like we've got a lot of engineers here in the area and sure. stuff that come from the different aerospace uh, industry. But I've got guys that are in their maybe their seventies. Mm -hmm. I think is is the oldest that I've that I've taught. But I even have a couple of students who are on the spectrum a little bit, so mm -hmm. they have they have some uh, some some uh, learning handicaps there that slow mm -hmm. them down. But we have a lot of fun. Uh, teaching that stuff, you know, trying to find ways that are that are relevant there, yeah, um, to get them interested in music, you know, and they, you, they surprise you actually. You get well. these big. I remember sometimes <laughs> I text my wife after a, after a lesson. Uh -huh. I'm like, oh, you know, so and so is. We were playing songs. We got yeah, to, we, we got them going. Songs, we got you know? playing through something. Yeah, yeah, so you get excited for them, and you you walk you walk along with them through yeah. the musical journey, and, and it becomes really cool. That's really cool. So it's never too late to get started. Correct. Is what never I'm hearing you say. Your hands are never too small or too large. Oh yeah, so those are excuses. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you know the arthritis it can slow people down. Some sometimes people have a physical thing like they've broken a finger and now it you know a dog legs left or whatever mm. that can slow you down. But you get the guys that say, oh my fingers are too small. They're not too small. Yeah, you can do it. Get in there. <laughs> So not only you teach guitar, what other instruments are you teaching at the store? Because so, you have a list of stuff that right, you're into. My, my main two are guitar and piano. Okay. Those are the ones that I have um, most of my students um, under. Okay. But I also teach ukulele, and I have a couple of bass students as well. That interpretive dance. I think he said he interpretive did interpretive dance. dance we too. do a lot of that. We get the banners out, and we... well, it's that and uh, and facial expressions. I think rock facial expressions <laughs> is also another class you do. Well, that's that's one of the subsets. You know, we have we we talk about gear. We're, We're kidding. We're kidding. <laughs> We're not kidding. We talk about guitar repair, guitar face. You gotta have a rock, good rock star face if you're gonna perform. So. Nice. So all right. So we're gonna wrap this up. If there was like one word of wisdom or encouragement that you'd want to let our viewers know and hear, what would that be when it comes to music? You know, good music. You need two things for it. You good. You need good tone. Okay. And you need good time. And you get both of those things from listening, mm. not just hearing music. But listening, and if you can listen well, we're going to develop good tone. We're going to develop good time, mm -hmm. and you're never too old to really develop that those skill sets. Awesome! So that's yeah. great. So if you're interested in taking lessons with John, he's available over at Wickham Road Music, and uh, he's a part of the roster there. We have many instructors to choose from, and the beauty of having a lot of instructors to choose from is that. You do get an opportunity to get different flavors because every instructor has a different way of doing things. Yeah. And so, and that's the beauty of it. And we, we celebrate the diversity uh, at Wickham Road Music. And uh, John, we appreciate you. We appreciate all that you do at the store. Um, he is a fantastic, fantastic guitar player and a wonderful person at the same time. So I just want everybody to know that. And uh, for now, I think we're going to wrap this up. And so if you have any further questions about our lesson program at Wicked Road Music, please contact the store and uh, please check us out. We want to see you there where music is a blast and where you're able to grow with your music. And uh, get started today because it's not too late.